Hello guys. Uh, so, some, this time I want to show you how to track performance in your application. So to do this, I'm going to use the kitchen sink demo and not the uh, real world because I want to show off some of the tools that perform much better with a more elaborate application like the kitchen sink. So here I just ran the debugger, the standard Java debugger. It works just as it would in any standard Java project and you should use it. Here I have an actual breakpoint on something but that's something else. Uh, you can use it just like you would any uh, debugger. I can just open uh, say the kitchen sink here or I can even just pause it and instantly see where everything is. For instance where the EDT is, where everything is standing in case something got stuck. So here I have uh, the standard kitchen sink. Say I want to break on the effects and see what's going in there. I can just go into the effects section right here, place a breakpoint, and debug it. Really convenient. I can just hover over everything, inspect everything, and see where everything is. I hope you're familiar with these tools. They're really, really useful and I'm showing them just because Java developers often don't look at them, but we offer a lot more. So for instance, if you want to see uh, if you have violations in the EDT, so the EDT is one of the most important things in Codename 1. When, uh, when every event or every paint operation happens in codename, when it happens on the event dispatch thread, the EDT, and if you, if your code is too slow and executes on the EDT, well, your application will be slow. If, on the other hand, your code is um, uh, accessing the EDT on a separate thread, then you might get a crash or uh, behaviors that are just unexplainable and really really hard to track. So the EDT uh, debugging tool here which I've activated will show you when you have an EDT violation but the thing is it's not always totally accurate because of the way things are implemented sometimes. So for instance it will fail on something like this. Uh, see it says it took too long to render a frame which is probably true and then it detects a violation of the EDT because there are some issues there related to the native components. So that's what essentially you'll see when you get a violation. The problem is you'll also see it every time you edit text. And you'll notice that you actually see the violation here as a stack pointing you at the specific method that did something supposedly bad. In this particular case, we didn't do anything bad. It was completely fine. It's just uh, text input doesn't really uh, work well with this tool but it's a really really useful tool for when things don't act as you would expect them to and it also gives you warnings about things like uh, slow rendering for certain things and in all sorts so that's that's a cool tool mm -hmm. the second one I've showed in the previous uh, session so I won't spend too much time on it is the network monitor so if I use something like a web service and I send a web service request, I'll actually see the request appear here. I see the details of the request, the response length, everything, and the full response data, including headers, including everything. Some headers are, are trimmed just because of uh, some limitations uh, of uh, the Java environment, but it's pretty complete for the most part. Uh, the next thing, test recorder, I won't go into. There's a separate tutorial I'll talk about testing all, all as well. Uh, but the last thing I want to do is talk about the performance monitor. And the performance monitor is a very interesting tool. Notice I'm playing a bit with the UI and suddenly I see the components that are in the UI now. Here, because the UI was hand-coded, most UI components don't have a name because I didn't actually name them. But in agreeable UI, you will actually see names. And you can arrange uh, the components by the speed they take to render, which obviously the big container takes the longest to render. Uh, but it will tell you what is taking up the most time 
and what is drawn the most amount of times in a particular screen and that is useful information. Now you'll notice that here we had some additional information uh, dumped into the screen like images being created. So this is very interesting for you guys if uh, you have a user interface where memory is running out for some reason well you can use this tool to monitor uh, which images are being created and images are usually the main reason for memory issues and it tells you pretty much how much memory and how much uh, in terms of size every image created takes and that's again very useful information to keep in mind when working with a tool like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this short tutorial and I hope you'll make use of uh, the tools we have available for uh, testing performance and debugging and I hope you'll be able to resolve your issues and if not uh, talk to us in the discussion forum where we'll try and help you uh, with these things. Uh, I didn't go into things like logging and everything because that's not so much the, the, a part of it but you should be uh, should be using the log APIs of Codename One, which provide a very useful way to debugging on the devices, at least in terms of logging. So that's all for now, and thanks for watching.